Hello and welcome. My name is Pankaj Dubey and in this video we are going to talk about software testing foundation. So we'll see that what is software testing, what are the different different phases involved in software testing and what is the importance of software testing. So if you Google what is testing, Google says a procedure intended to establish the quality, performance or reliability of something especially before it is taken into widespread use is called a testing. So the same thing will be implemented in terms of software or the web application or the mobile applications and it will be called software testing. So there we will check the quality, the performance and the reliability and uh, this is this is the key things that we will be testing as part of the software testing. Software testing is an intentional process of executing an application with an intention of finding bugs and errors. Okay, or also you can call that software testing is a process of verification and validation performed on application under test, which is called AUT, with an intention of finding bugs and errors. STLC. STLC stands for Software Testing Life Cycle and there are different different phases involved in the STLC and which will be executed by the tester or the test planning board or the testing uh, testing lead. Uh, in order to achieve the testing tasks. So there are different different phases and a total are seven phases in STLC which is test planning, test designing, test environment, test execution, bug reporting and management, RTM requirement traceability mat matrix and test reporting. So broadly if you categorize this then it is it will be divided into three parts planning, execution and reporting. So under planning thing the test planning, designing, environment uh, will be uh, will will come under the planning phase. Test execution, bug reporting and management, RTM requirement traceability matrix, matrix will come under the test execution phase and in test reporting phase the reporting and other test closure activities will come. So let's see what is planning. In the test planning a tester or the test lead defines the test objective that what they have to achieve at the end of the uh, testing. Okay, so the goal will be defined as part of the test objective. Next is test strategy where a test lead or the test manager will define the strategy that how to achieve the test objective. What will be the testing uh, types that they need to implement, how they need to execute test cases, what are the tools that will be implemented to achieve the task will come under the test strategy. Resources. So they will estimate that do they have enough uh, resources to execute the testing to, to complete the testing within the given time framework. Do they have the proper uh, or the required softwares and the hardwares. So that will be uh, assessed as part of the resources. Next is schedules and timelines. So as part of the schedules and timelines, the test manager will assign a role to each, uh, 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 will assign the responsibilities to each a uh, role and uh, there will be some associated timelines that everyone has to complete their task within a given time uh, line. Next is risks. So uh, the test manager or the test lead will have to assess all the risks associated with the, uh, with the testing uh, phases. So they'll see that they, do they have enough skills, do they have enough softwares or the hardwares required for testing, do they have enough budget, do they have enough time and do they have enough resources because there may be certain instances where the resource will leave the organization and uh, what happens in that case, what will happen in that, in that case. So do they have any uh, backup for that? So that will be assessed as part of the risks phase. And uh, what is entry and exit criteria? So uh, a tester doesn't begin the testing as soon as they receive the build from developer. They do perform some kind of uh, build verification check that whether the application is stable enough to perform the testing and uh, do they have enough supply of test data. So everything will be, there will be certain uh, things that will be decided as part of the entry criteria and same goes with exit criteria where uh, they'll define some points that needs to be delivered and achieved before they can exit the testing cycle. Next is, is designing. So in designing three things uh, comes. So one is test scenarios. 
So here you will broadly categorize the requirement into functions that what are the functions that needs to be tested and uh, to, to test that function there uh, you may write multiple number of test cases. So uh, to achieve to execute a test scenario you will have to write number of test cases and how to execute those test cases for that thing you will have to write each step and each step what activity the tester will perform and what will be the expected result it will be written as part of the test scripts there are further uh, videos where we'll see all these things in detail like test planning test designing here i'm just giving you a brief because this is just to give you an idea okay next is test environment so what happens uh, here you will have to prepare an uh, environment or you may be uh, already supplied with test environment where uh, it will be a dummy setup of uh, live site with the latest deployed uh, feature or the latest deployed build where you can execute your test cases and you can generate the test reports you can raise the bugs next is test data so to execute your test cases you need some test data on which you can perform the activity and you can generate the results so like if you're working in any banking domain then you will have to uh, work on some bank account numbers and that will be your test data in that case if you're working in any telecom domain and then you will have to need some mobile number or the telephone number so that will be your test data in case if you're working on any telecom domain if you're working for uh, any other thing same kind of data will be required for you so that you can do your testing activity on your data and you can generate the test result also you will have to set up the uh, software and the hardware which is required as part of the testing i mean to execute your test cases you may require some extra software or the hardware so that needs to be deployed properly and you need to uh, properly set up this so that you can execute your test cases and generate the test results next is bug management so you will define here that how to how how you will be raising the bugs if you need to define some kind of naming structure then it will be defined here how the bug components will be assigned uh, bug com what are the bug, bug components that you need to attach with the bug how how to which team you need to raise the bug what will be the bug life cycle so everything will be defined as part of the bug life cycle uh, bug management so the, there are tools like bugzilla jira hpqc or the hp L alm mantis so these are the tools that you can uh, use as part of the bug management tool next is test reporting so uh, as part of the test reporting the test team will have to share the test results if you have captured the screenshots for uh, proof then that will be uh, counted as counted as your test result or any kind of output that you have generated after completing your test is called uh, test results so test report will be uh, test results will be shared with your stakeholder holders or the client bug report so uh, as part of the testing you will raise many number of bugs but it's not always necessary that all the bug raised uh, is valid so you have to filter it with the, you will you, you will have to remove the invalid bugs you will have to remove the duplicate bugs you will have to remove the rejected bugs so only the valid number of bugs will be shared as part of the bug report next is test coverage so you will have to give the rtm or any proof so that it can prove that you have completed completely executed you have given the 100 percent test coverage to your requirement and uh, as part of the testing closer activity you will have to uh, make some kind of lesson learned so that you do not implement you do not do the same mistake again you will or, or you will have to prepare some kind of sops which is called standard operating procedure so to do any activity every company used to make some kind of sop so that a new join is ready for this sop and they can execute those steps so why is testing important so these are the points that i have mentioned here but it's not uh, limited to only these points there are many other things it's just to give you a brief idea that why testing is important so uh, testing is important to make sure that all business requirements are implemented properly and no requirement is left functionalities are behaving as it is expected to do so all uh, it means that expected results and actual results are matching with each other application is secure enough so that no confidential information is revealed to any other third party or any unauthorized person 
and uh, data is encrypted during the traveling over the network and there are many other things that will be tested as part of the security testing it doesn't break under working circumstances so in case uh, consider if you receive 100 users per second and which is expected on your website so have you already planned for that that what will be the, your response time and your server doesn't break at that moment so that thing will be covered as part of this testing and uh, testing is done to make sure that it doesn't harm your business reputation so no data is revealed to third party no hacking done on your website no customer information is, to, is stale from your application and uh, and many other things that may harm your business reputation is covered as part of the this testing uh, perform such functions within a within an acceptable time so the like if you are considering a web apps website then the page load time shouldn't exceed 6 to 8 seconds because uh, that is not the standard. Uh, it works well on all supported OS devices and screens. So you will have to perform the compatibility testing to make sure the responsiveness and the rendering of your web application on different different devices, screens or the OS. So uh, like uh, say the time is of responsiveness uh, websites. So if you're developing a website, the same website should be rendered properly on mobile devices too, along with on desktop websites, on desktop browsers. So uh, at the end, it is done to make sure that customer can trust on your application and they can uh, do their, what is, I mean, the, your website is supposed to be worked on so this is basically to make sure or to generate enough confidence in your customers a classic example of uh, why testing is important so nasa's climate orbiter was lost due to the two agencies nasa and lockheed martin used two different measurement units and that was not tested or it was left or uh, it was not thoroughly tested uh, so it it it, it I mean they didn't notice the difference so you can say that there was some kind of uh, lack on on the part of integration testing so integration testing is done when two components are merged together to see that whether it is properly working when integrated with each other so uh, and they lost millions of dollars with, uh, with that satellite so that's all uh, that's all in uh, in the testing foundation and in next we will see what is QA QC and testing.